Hey, what's going on, guys? Coach Bronson here, and we're about to go through my blood work. I just got a blood test done. I've been carnivore for over four years, four years, okay? Eating nothing but meat, getting less than 10 or 15 grams of carbs every day. I do not eat vegetables, and let's see what my blood says. Right, guys let's get into my blood work this is uh let's see we're gonna actually look at the blood work that i've been taking not every year but I, I did some blood work last week i did some blood work last year in october and then i did some blood work in 2019 2018 at like three or six months there's like three sets of blood of things of blood work i did the first uh, year or so that i did carnivore so we're going to see a look at the first year i did carnivore and then the last two years of carnivore since I've been doing carnivore now for a little over four years, right? Four years and three months, something like that. So we're going to take a look at that progression, see how it goes. Maybe identify if there's anything I need to change or switch up, try to figure out why some of these numbers may look the way they look and kind of go from there. So let's take a look. Um, I've got it up here. Let me minimize this, put myself down to the bottom corner. All right. So we're looking at my spreadsheet and... As you can see, like I said, I did three sets of tests. Um, I started carnivore in May of 2018. Okay, so this was the first test I did a couple months after. Then I did one in September 18. Then I did one um, a few months after that. So you got kind of like the first look of, of my numbers from there. And then I did one last year after I got uh, hooked up with Dave Feldman and got and learned about the ownyourlabs.com website where you can get way cheaper blood work done, um, even get a discount on what's there. I have a link now so you can get an additional discount so you can get 15% off your own blood work. Plus, it's already cheap as heck to do that. You go online, you put what tests you want in, you pay for it, they send you all the paperwork, you just bring it, make an appointment, bring it to LabCorp or wherever you want to get your test done and then get it all done on your own. It's super cheap. Right? All of these tests that we're going to look at and there's even more. I don't have everything in here, just the main um, tests that I kind of wanted to track. Um, but I got a whole bunch of tests. I was like 170 bucks and I got a full metabolic panel. I got the hormone stuff. I got my C-reactive protein. I got testosterone. Like I got a ton of stuff done. So um, something you should take a look at. Ownyourlabs.com. Um, all right. So let's start off with looking at the ones I just did this week. Okay. So got my numbers. I'm 50 years old. I weigh 185 pounds, 10% body fat, and I've been doing carnivore for almost 1600 days in a row. Can you believe it? Okay. My C-reactive protein, this is an inflammation marker, is pretty high. It's 2.8 with a, the reference range is one to three. Okay. Um, this is just a general indication of overall inflammation in the body. And it being super high right now, I'm not concerned. Obviously, it's not. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind with all of these tests is they are a point in time. So I could, I've, I've been working out a lot. I've been doing a lot more physical activity lately and taking this test. It's not like I stopped doing things for a couple of days to let my inflammation cool down um, before I went to take the test. So working out hard, getting up in the morning the next day and go getting a blood test it's very likely my inflammation in general is going to be a little higher. Working out causes stress, not a big deal. If I were to do this consistently, let's say I went and got a test every month and every month I did it, it was high or getting higher or trending in an upward direction, then I might probably worry about it. I'm also not having any symptoms of chronic stress. I don't have energy management issues. I don't have fatigue. I'm not worried about any of those types of things. So. There's a, the, an interplay between all of these numbers, guys. Remember, these numbers are an insight into things that are going on in your body. They do not mean anything, in many cases, they don't mean anything by themselves. You have to look at everything in a big picture, big picture view, okay? Now, there could be something that you're like, hey, you know what, that one number, and regardless of everything else, that one number we need to take a look at. Um, if you can't find a reason that makes sense, that's not, bad. Okay. If we look at, you'll see some of the other numbers. If we looked at some of these numbers and you look at them and you go, these, 
these are in a bad range. We don't know why, or we do know why they're in a bad range and we need to fix it. Okay. Those are things you need to, to be aware of just because you're carnivore doesn't mean that numbers don't matter. You just have to look at them a little differently. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So looking at my C reactor protein, it's a little high. I'm not too worried about it. I am regularly applying stress to my body. Um, regularly, every, just about every single day. I mean, I take two days a week off for rest and recovery usually. Um, but I'm fairly active. I work out hard. I just started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu again. So, um, that number being high, I'm not too worried about. Hey, it's still within reference range. We're good to go. All right. The next one. Um, and traditionally, here's the other thing. Traditionally, it's been low. Um, when I did this last test uh, last year around this time, I was not nearly as active. I was not lifting or doing as much on a regular basis. So that being lower, I also did it after a break. Like I had the week in Las Vegas um, with basically just going to the conference for, the, for that for those few days, having a pretty chill like almost a 10 day period where I didn't work out. I didn't do a lot of stuff. So I was very, very lower level of, of overall, what we call allostatic load of stress. So I can see why that would be lower compared to where I'm currently a higher level of allostatic stress, but not chronic, not to the point of detriment. And that's where you got to balance that out. All right. Um, next thing we have is lipids. Okay. We're going to skip over all these other things. All right, total cholesterol, holy cannoli, 328, ah! All right, here's what's gonna happen, guys. I'm gonna go through these things and just kind of tell you if I'm concerned or if I'm not and why. But if you really want some details, I'm gonna put some links in the description. There's gonna be a link to Cholesterol Code, which is Dave Feldman's website that explains all about cholesterol, lipids, and how they should react and where you can where your ranges could be based on your dietary and, and life, your dietary lifestyle and your activity, things like that. I'm also going to post a link to a really, really, really good article that Dr. Kevin Stock wrote on analyzing blood labs for carnivores. Okay. He's got a lot of information. He uses his own, like I'm doing here. He uses his own blood work as a carnivore. He's been carnivore for longer than I have. Um, he uses his own blood work to kind of break down some of these same things and explain what the case can be for why or why those, why they are or aren't, why the numbers are or aren't um, okay. We'll just say it okay. All right, so we'll break some of it down. I'll put links to all that stuff in the description so you can really kind of dig into it and get some more information, okay? Um, and if you didn't know, Kim Howerton, the ketonist with Dr. Barry just came out with a new uh, ebook that you can download um, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll put that link as well. I think you can download the electronic version for like 15 bucks. Um, and it goes over a lot of the information about what labs are and what to look for if you're keto carnivore. Okay. So that's another thing you can, you can get a look at as well. It's really cool. I just got it today and it's got a lot of good info in it. Um, all right. So we talked about C-reactive protein. Let's look at LDL. Total cholesterol is high. LDL is high, direct HDL is high, triglycerides are low. Hmm, what are we really worried about? Okay, these three numbers, guys, total cholesterol, LDL, and direct HDL, I could give a crap. Okay, this number is the best my triglycerides have looked in four years. Okay, 59, that's the lowest they've been in four years. My ratio is the best it's been since I've been doing this. My ratio for HDL triglycerides um, is crazy good. Okay, 90 HDL to 59 triglycerides. That's awesome. 0 0.6, 0 0.66 on the, tri the HDL to triglyceride ratio. That's really good. Okay, that's what you're looking for. You don't want high triglycerides. You need triglycerides. They're important. They, ha they function. You don't need too many of them. Okay, remember that. That's cool. That's good. I like that. So remember overall total cholesterol, LDL, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, all that kind of stuff doesn't really matter. The biggest number to look at, to look at is this, whoop, right? Is that uh, HDL to triglyceride ratio. Okay. You want it to be one or less, one or less is what you're looking for. Okay. 
From there, we go to my liver. Let's look at metabolic stuff. Well, let's look at insulin first. Insulin is pretty good, okay? It's not bad. Um, I didn't put a reference range in there. I forget what the reference range is. I think, I don't remember the time. I think like eight or nine or something like that is the low on the reference range. So I'm below the reference range. Um, and it's a little higher than it was last year, not as high as it was before. It's just kind of is what it is, right? I'm not worried about insulin. I'm, I have no issues with insulin sensitivity. That's a no, that's a no brainer. HbA1c, it's the lowest it's been since I tested 5.3, not a huge change, 5.5, four years ago, 5.3 now. Um, looks good to me, I'm happy with that. Uh, especially with all the talk of long-term carnivores having super high A1Cs. Um, I eat 200 grams of protein plus every day and um, don't seem to have a problem with that. My glucose, 99, not the lowest it's ever been, not the highest it's ever been, not worried about that. Again, I'm not really concerned with my blood sugars. I'm not eating carbs. My body's producing glycogen as needed. I am very active. I do a lot of anaerobic work. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, anaerobic work. I do a lot of high intensity work. So I am utilizing glycogen a lot. My body is producing a lot of it. And that being high does not surprise me at all. All right, these numbers here, okay, bilirubin, bun creatinine, bun creatinine ratio, they're all high guys, okay? Um, this is all about kidney function. Now, one of the things, and you'll see this because Kevin, uh, Dr. Stock, Kevin Stock gets into this in the article that I'm gonna link in the description. And he talks about, it is expected that your liver numbers are going to show higher than average if you are active, if you have a high amount of lean mass, and if you are eating a lot of protein, okay? So I am very active, I have a high amount of lean mass, and I eat a lot of protein. So my kidney does have to do some extra work. Now, is it more than my kidney can handle? I don't think it is. I'm not showing any of the signs and symptoms. So there's some things that you can look at for kidney function, okay? Uh, jaundice, bile buildup, swelling of the feet. Like there's a, there's a list of like seven or eight different things that you can look at that are indicators outside of just the numbers that are indicators of kidney dysfunction. I don't have any of them. I feel fantastic. Everything is good. Will I keep an eye on these numbers? Absolutely. If they get any worse, air quotes for worse, if they get any further outside of the range, then I'll definitely see, start thinking about some things that I may need to change. Maybe it's just a matter of um, reducing my protein. Maybe what'll happen is when I get to my lean mass goal, I'm trying to get to 100 pounds of lean mass. I'm at like 95, 96 right now. So I got four or five more pounds of, uh, sorry, skeletal muscle mass. When I put on those extra four or five pounds of skeletal muscle mass, I get to my goal of 100. Maybe I'll drop down to a maintenance level on protein for a couple of weeks and then do another blood test and see if those numbers go down. Maybe it's just the amount of protein I'm taking in. Um, it could be the amount of exercise as well. Exercise stimulates all very similar things in your kidneys and uh, they all kind of tie together. And that's why these numbers are the way they are, okay? Nothing about them, about these numbers. I'm, I'm not worried about anything with these numbers based on my lifestyle because I'm doing things that you would expect to affect these numbers or because I also don't have any symptoms. So when we look at the whole picture, these numbers are out of range to the norm, but I'm out of range to the norm. So, hey, that's how it is, okay? Uh, just look at it that way. What else we got? Uh, Testosterone-free is high. It's the highest it's been in four years, okay? 12.4 or 12.9. The highest I've seen so far since uh, I started this was 10.7. My free testosterone is not, the total testosterone isn't the highest it's ever been, but it's pretty close. So I'm doing okay. I would like to see that get closer to 24, 30. Um, and there are things that I'm doing, like I'm trying to get outside and get more vitamin D every day, uh, doing things like that, get more anabolic time each, each night to sleep better. A lot of the things that we do to help build muscle also helps increase testosterone. So I'm trying to work on some things there. I like that number being at 12.9. I do want it to go up. So I will be doing things specifically to help that number go up, okay? Um, another thing to take a look at is my cortisol. We look at overall stress, right? So 
we look at these numbers and go like, oh my God, you're stressed out, blah, 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 your kidney's gonna fail. Well, my overall stress is pretty cool. This was this blood test that I took was in the morning, in the AM, and I'm at 12.4. I'm like smack dab in the middle of the, the healthy range for cortisol at that time of day. Okay. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I'm good. Right. So in general, guys, I think these numbers all look good. There's nothing in here that makes me go, oh my God, I'm going to die. There's nothing in here that makes me go carnivore is not safe. Um, if anything, if these numbers, okay, these are probably the only numbers. If you had numbers like this, you weren't working out consistently, you weren't trying to build and gain lean mass, or you, uh, and, and that's really about it. It's about the, uh, the amount of growth. So even if you have a lot of muscle, there's more muscle turnover, but if it's more about if you are actively growing muscle. So if you are eating protein, doing resistance training, working out regularly and having all of those stressors, you have more muscle protein synthesis going on, then your liver has to do a little more work. Or sorry, your kidneys have to do a little more. I said livers before, didn't I? Your kidneys have to do a little more work. Okay. So uh, that is why this is happening. Your kidneys are just doing more and that's fine. Okay. It's okay. Um, again, long term, if I do this every six months and for the next three years, these numbers are high, could that potentially cause some issues with my liver being overworked for a long period of time? Maybe. I have no idea. Do I want to try it? Maybe. I have no idea. We'll see. Like I said, I think the next test for me to do would be to get to my goal, drop the protein, and then see if those numbers change after I reduce the protein intake um, and see what happens. So that's my numbers, guys. I'm not worried about anything. If you have any questions, post in the comments. Um, the links are going to be really good. I got the link to cholesterol code. I got the link to Dr. Stock's article. Um, and then I got the link to Kim Howerton and Dr. Barry's new ebook. All right. I'll put those in the description. Take it easy. See you on the next side. See you on the flip side.